So at your own pace, at your own time, you need to go to the About screen, fill in the About screen as much as makes sense for you. Uh, the general anatomy of a Facebook business page is a little bit different than a regular page, but they all share the same sort of thing in that there's a search at the top. So if you take a quick look at search, this is the same idea that if I uh, search for, you know, bakery, this is going to give me a variety of businesses or topics on Facebook, just like Twitter, just like Google+. Plus. All of the networks have search. If I search bakery, things regarding bakeries appear. So Magnolia Bakery appeared. They're in New York, however bakeries nearby so there's these various ones like this one doesn't have does not have the word bakery in its title but it still appears again to show you you don't need the keyword bakery in your username you could still be found because this bakery most likely has other stuff on their page that helps them get found the reason i show you search is to see is to see the nearby results other people's pages, groups, photos. So you see a lot of stuff that appears because of that keyword bakery. I also bring this up uh, as inspiration. You can see what is appearing, what's appearing on various results for you to get a possible idea of what you could be searching as well. Uh, you know, this one is from June 26th, June 28th. And also, inspiration for the competition. I mentioned looking at other people's or other businesses' Twitter pages or, or Facebook pages. Uh, so, if you click on uh, some competitor, you know, they won't they won't be alerted that you looked at their page. So you can look at the competition's pages, similar to what we did with uh, the other networks. We can see who's connected with a page to sort of snipe their followers and such. But looking at this particular company, they've got, you know, they took the spot here instead of their logo, they put a shelf of bread. Then here is, it looks like it's their menu on the projector looks okay but on my monitor I kind of see more of the low quality nature of it I can see some of these um, you can't see it on the projector but on the edges of the letters it looks kind of fuzzy and blurry on my screen uh, that could have been a better photo it's not quite even centered and there's a little bit of text at the bottom here that is cut off but I look at them and they've got a review 4.6 stars Facebook has the ability also for people to review you here you can be reviewed on Yelp, and you can review, be reviewed on you know, Google Local Search, and you can be reviewed on Facebook as well. It's yet another spot for you to, to manage. And on a previous week, we talked about advice on managing reviews. Those notes are still in the network folder if you need to review them. Basically, this account has 3,592 likes. They posted pictures, you've got reviews, 299 reviews, videos, one of their recent um, upload items was, was a video. There was this post, this post was pinned, meaning it will always be visible first. We can pin a post. We didn't mention it, but on Twitter, you can pin a tweet as well. You post a tweet that you always want people to see first. You can click the icon on your tweet and select pin the tweet. Here you have something also like that on Facebook. You post something on Facebook, and because if you're posting once a week, older things will be pushed down. So you can click the icon of your post, that little triangle, and you'll have the option to pin your post so that it's visible first. Besides that, yesterday, uh, the, or two days ago on the 28th, at 754, they posted this. Before that, at noon, they posted that. Before that, February 28th, etc. 
So they were active for a little bit, January, then February, and then they stopped for a couple of months. They started again in June, and then you see how active they are. But they've built already 3,000 followers, 3,500 followers. That does not mean they make 3,000 sales every day or every week or every month or every year. It just means that they've got all of these followers. And we spoke previously that more followers could be more conversions, right? More impressions could be, result in more conversions, more sales, more calls, whatever they're trying to get. Hey, call now. I want that for my business. I want a way for people to call me or contact me right away. This is again what I'm telling you. Look at the competition to see what they've done to get ideas of what you can do. For example, that call now button. I want that. If you, if you go back to your page, one way is to just press back till you get back to it, or you can click the triangle. Now you should be able to jump from, your, from page to page, or it may show it to you over here as well. And wherever you're at, you can go back to your page, and you will see below your graphic, your cover image, add a button. That other company that I saw had call us now. And on mine I see add a button. Add a button to get people to take an action from your page, such as shop or sign up. And that button is even more pre prevalent and obvious on mobile. So if someone visits your Facebook page on mobile, that button will be much more visible. You click on add a button, you have these various actions. There's, you cannot modify it at the moment to uh, make it say exactly what you want, but you have these general tasks or they're known as calls to action. A call, a call to action. How do you convince people to do something? We have book a service, get in touch, learn more, make a purchase, download the app. So under book service, we have the button that'll say book now or request time, start order, and more options. Get in touch, call now, contact us, send us a message, sign up, get a quote. So if I'm a realtor, maybe uh, I can have people send me an email or message me. So whatever makes sense to your business, you can select that. And you can only have one of these at a time, however. You can switch between them. You can have one call to action button at the top of your page at a time. You also want to complete your profile, your page, about screen, so logo, cover image, about screen, call to action button. You want to set those up as soon as you can on your account. Your Facebook page has then various buttons, page screen, messages screen. This is where you can contact your customers directly, you'll have an inbox or you can converse privately with your with your clients to solve an issue or to talk about something. So there's messages. Notifications will keep you up to date with what's happened on your on your page. Show me all the likes that I got, who liked my page, show me who has shared my content. Here's another spot where you can invite friends. Here's where you can select to let your friends and family know about your business. This, this still also does not have the 
uh, select all. You may or may not have insights. Some people don't have insights right away, but I've got an account that I've set up already, and it, mine has it, but yours may not yet until you get activity. Insights, this is that screen where I mentioned that it, Facebook tells you what's the best time for you to post, what is the best kind of thing for you to post, what keywords worked best for you. So your insights is going to be one of the most important screens for you to look at because you can do A-B testing as well. I talked about how Facebook is doing it to us. Some people got one version, some people got another version. You will be able to do A-B testing too. It's on a different screen, but basically it's you're, you're going to post something with one version, with one picture. You're going to post the same thing, but maybe with a different picture. Which one worked more, the picture with text or the picture with people? I don't know. So I can do both. Facebook will gather that data and tell you the one with people worked best. Maybe you use the same photo for A and B, but then on one you, you write the text in a certain way, let's say in a stoic voice, and another one you write it in a fun voice. You activate that and then it'll tell you the one with the stoic voice worked better for your text preparation business, not with the funny voice. Can you do Facebook Live on your business page? You can. You should be able to. Um, on the app itself, there should be an option there to select. I don't see it from here, but there should be able a way to do that on the, on the app. Oh, on, the, on your phone. Yeah. Oh. It, um, it's kind of limited. Some couple of things that you can do on Facebook, you cannot do them on the regular desktop because, you know, like the camera, you need a camera on your computer and all of that. And so on your app on the phone, that's when it gives you a few more options because you can turn on the camera whenever you want. Where would it be on your phone? You... Well, I can't really show the phone to the class, but it's going to be on the, uh, on the Facebook app um, option to activate the camera there. There should be a way to change between profiles. Okay, because I've looked at it before. I tried to figure it out, but it and we've got publishing tools. Um, this is a, a place for you to either look at everything that you've published or a place for you to create something new, which is the same sort of screen when you're on the page, your main page. You have a spot here to share a photo, an event, and such. Publishing tools is another way to create something just via a different screen. So all videos that you've shared will be listed here so you can share them again. So I'll make a note here. As often as possible. Share something new, but it's okay to share something old, something that you that you posted on in January, something that you posted four weeks ago. It's okay to reshare, repurpose your old content if it makes sense, if it's evergreen. Obviously, I wouldn't reshare some link uh, that is said, you know, sale this weekend. Follow this post. Follow this link doesn't make sense. But if you're sharing, uh, in my case, a tasty cupcake, I could share that whenever I want at any time. I have to be careful, though, if I share the same thing over and over. Just because it was a big hit one time doesn't mean I'm going to rely on that and keep sharing it over and over. Then your current followers or future followers would be bored. They're, you're, sh you're sharing the same thing over and over. So don't overdo it. share the same thing too often to try to recapture effectiveness. Try sharing something again from six months ago. So if I'm active once a week, I should have stuff that I can look up from six months ago, and that older stuff will be found there in your in your um, 
publishing tools, what has been published, you can just go back in time to find your, old, your older content. Then we've got settings. There are a lot of settings on this screen, I won't mention them all, but I'll mention a few settings that I think are very valuable to you as a business. Let's look at this together. Go to your settings screen. It'll show you general settings, lots of general settings. If I don't quite mention something, uh, the default is fine. But notice the second item, page visibility, page published. Uh, sometimes people want to make a, a big overhaul on their page. They want new graphics, they want new text, etc. And they don't have a chance to do it all in one sitting. Well, as you're editing your page, people will see your changes. You have the possibility of unpublishing your page temporarily and re republishing it. If you check on publish, it will only be seen by people with a role on the page. I'll explain roles in a little bit. But this will basically hide it from people on, on Facebook. I don't really recommend to ever do this. I don't think the changes you're going to make on your page are going to be so extensive that you need to, to do it now for an hour and come back five hours later and work on it some more. You can probably make these changes in 20 minutes, probably. So I don't really recommend to unpublish yourself. There's no big benefit really to hide yourself, especially if you've got seven followers. Um, so it's up to you. If you've got one follower. So um, you could do that. You could, you could unpublish your page. Remember to republish it because then you'll say, why aren't I getting any more activity? I updated my site. You never republished it. Here's a very important one, visitor posts. Um, Twitter and Facebook, deep down, philosophically are very different in that Twitter is a very, very open network. Everyone has a voice. Anyone has a voice for good and for bad. Um, Twitter for businesses could be a little trickier because you have less control of the message. You post something on Twitter, you, you want it to go viral, it doesn't. You post something on Twitter, you try to guide it with a certain, certain hashtag, and that hashtag gets overrun by people that use that, that mis misuse the hashtag. Let's say, uh, there's a, this, an example that happens all the time. A few years ago, uh, I believe the, the, the New York Police Department um, on Twitter, you know, they wanted to do community outreach on Twitter. They posted, they made a tweet that says, share your photos, uh, of, you know, your, your local police officers, hashtag it NY, NYCPD. They were well-meaning. Well, stuff happened, and people started to post uh, photos of police brutality, of police overreach, of exactly what they didn't want promoted. And the NYPD has no control over that. They started the hashtag, but other people took it over and put out a different message. The opposite is Facebook, that you can control your message a lot. You can decide what is visible. You can control the hashtag. You can remove people's messages. If someone's off topic, you can remove it. If someone is abusive, you can remove it. Twitter, for good and for bad, is very open. For businesses, it's a little trickier on Twitter because it's so open. But the openness of Twitter is also its biggest asset. Uh, do you remember the Arab Spring from a few years ago? The revolutions that happened in the Middle East. People were on social media to communicate with each other. The government had control of the newspaper, of the television, of the radio, but not the internet. So people got online on Twitter where there was where there's no one central government and communicated with each other and caused changes. So that's one plus side for being very open and for being very open and negative is your business, your message can be co-opted and you can't do too much about it. Facebook, this is the screen where you have that control. This is the option. I can start to, if I was the NYPD and I went on my on the Facebook account and posted there, share your share your NYPD police stories, hashtag NYPD NC, NYC. And people start to post weird things. Disable post. So I'm putting out the message, 
but then I'm saying, okay, don't let people comment on this page. It's getting too negative. I can turn it off. You can head them off at the pass by first activating that, and then you're, ta you're posting your content, but others are not, you know, the mean people or the off-topic people, the, stroll, the trolls and the spam won't be able to post. You might say, that's a great option. I'll turn it on. Before you do that, I believe I mentioned it before, but I'll mention it again because it's more relevant in Facebook. Decide if you're running social media, so any of these networks, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, whatever, decide if you're running social media as a dialogue or as a monologue. Dialogue traditionally two or more people talking. Monologue, one person talking. In terms of social media, a monologue is you talk at your followers. You post something on Twitter, about your sale, about your products, etc., but you never follow up, you never follow through, meaning someone replies to you and you never reply back. On Facebook, I activate the option, the second option, and that's a monologue. I can talk to my followers, but they can't talk back to me. The dialogue is then you talk with your followers. You reply to people, you acknowledge what they've said, you like their stuff back. You you are active. It's a it's a dialogue back and forth. You have to decide which of these two do you want to do. The easiest one is the monologue. You have less to deal with, answering people's questions, patting people on the head. Um, but the monologue in social media, you're removing the social in social media, being active with people. People want authenticity nowadays. You know, the believability of the online media is at an all-time low. You would be part of that, uh, an online entity. And if you're a business, you know, if you've got your logo on your account and all of that, who are the people behind the, that business, the, these logos here? Do you have a picture of the people, of, of the company, of the location? So the... The long way to say this is if you disable posts by other people, you are cutting off activity and communication. People won't be able to comment positively or negatively. If you allow this one on, any person can write anything they want on your Facebook page, good or bad. And there's plenty of social media fails on Facebook. You know, a food company posts a photo of their food and they say share your own food experiences and people post photos of the food looking terrible. Well, that's not what I want to see. I want to look great. I want to look at great photos of our food. The middle ground is this option here that is turned off. Review posts by other people before they're published. So if you turn on disable, that is the monologue. I personally don't recommend to run any of your social media as a monologue be active, reply to people, be social on social media. And I don't recommend leaving it completely open like this. I recommend allow, but activate review. You will get a notification when someone writes something on your Facebook page, and you will then be able to allow what appears after you check it out, after you confirm that it's on topic, or that it's nice, or that it relates. So that's the one I recommend. Just you the, the one here that matters for the monologue versus dialogue is that one. Mm -hmm. This one is just to let people, do you want to let them to comment with a text only or with photos and video? That one was already on, and I recommend to leave it on because, again, our multimedia culture nowadays, I want to share that photo of your great food, not just say text that it's great. So I would leave that one on and I would recommend to turn on review. 
We've got dialogue and monologue. Recommendation, my recommendation. Leave on allow, but turn on review. Check their comment first before allowing it to appear. It's your company. You have that ability. Question. I work a WordPress account which allows people to make comments. Mm -hmm. get all kinds of spam, hundreds of spam. Does the same thing happen in Facebook? Not as much. You don't get the same sort of spam on Facebook that you might get on WordPress. Now, via it's off topic, but on WordPress you have various plugins that will help you manage the spam. Look into a plugin called Akismet. A K I S M E T. Akismet. That should help you cut down your WordPress spam so that you don't have to deal with it yourself. But Facebook uh, can do a pretty good job of cutting down the spam for you. Uh, so this is your your business on Facebook. You have a lot of leeway. This is how you can keep it on track. This is how you can keep it civil. You can allow to show whatever you want with whatever people write. This is not infringing on anyone's free speech. This is your business, your property, just like in the real world. You can call me whatever names you want, but on the sidewalk, not on my front lawn. On my front lawn, it's my property, and I have the right to in impinge on your free speech on my property. You can go to the sidewalk and say whatever you want to me, and I'll call the cops there. Now here on your Facebook, it's sort of the same thing. This is your property. A person can create their own Facebook page and slander you however they want on their Facebook page. But on your Facebook page, you are free to activate that option and remove those comments or never let them appear. And you are free to keep it on task, on, on topic. If you want to only allow all the nice comments and not the bad comments, even though they were on topic but someone bad mouths you, you can still delete them, not allow them through. It's your property, so to speak. So I would recommend you turn that one on and click Save. Other options, if it doesn't make sense, they often have a little question mark next to it. But here's the spot where you can have these private messages. This inbox at the top is dictated by this message. If you don't want people to contact you privately, you can turn it off. You've got country restrictions, age restrictions, moderation, profanity filter. So all of these various things you can look at on your own. The one I really wanted to point out was uh, visitor posts. At the very bottom, you also have the option to delete this page. If this was just a testing page, there's a spot for you to delete it. On the left side, let's look at uh, page roles. So I logged in with my personal account, and then I created a business account and I'm managing it. If I want more people to help me manage this account, I can give them access via page roles. From this screen page roles, I can assign a new page role and look at who currently has access. So the other person needs a Facebook account before they can manage this. So here, if I start typing a person's name, 
it will give me recommendations of who to manage, who, who to let it manage. And the funny thing is this, that this will give you the, just like everyone, quote unquote, on Facebook. Although it should give you the first one or two if you know the person. So be careful here. You, you can give access. I wanted to give access to Patricia, but I accidentally clicked Patricia, and this is someone who I don't know, and they have access to my page as a manager. Although some of them say Molly is a, is a mutual friend, so I know Molly, we're connected. Here it's saying why not give Patricia, so friend of friend, um, access. And the kinds of access here are roles. When you select one of these, it will tell you what it does, but they basically go in order from top to bottom. The default was editor. This person can send messages and publish as the page, respond to and delete comments, create ads, etc., etc. So this is the second most powerful level. The most powerful is admin. And Facebook itself warns you, if you're going to add someone else to your page as an admin, they will have the same power as you. So in theory, they can delete you out of your own page. So if you added an employee to manage your page and you add them as an admin and you fire them and they're disgruntled and they still have access, they can kick you out. The default used to be everyone would get an admin and Facebook saw that that was causing problems, so now it's editor. You add someone as an editor and they can't kick you out of your own page. They can do other things in lower levels, you know, down to analyst, live contributor. Live contributor can go live as the page from a mobile device. So they can activate on their mobile device the company Facebook Live to turn on live broadcasting. They can't comment, create ads, or access other tools. Analyst can really only see uh, who worked on the page and not really do anything. Notes on adding roles, avoid adding or, or giving other people admin access unless you trust them. So that's a lot of power, giving that admin role. You have full access. They can even go to that screen and delete the whole page, and it'll be gone. So the second level, editor, should be good enough for most people. Editor role, editor access should work for most people. Another question. Yes. If I mention one and admin, can I remove them or enter? Yes, you will be able to remove other admins also. It has the full control. You'll see them down here and then there'll be the way to edit them to either change their ability or to remove them from the page. But this is the same screen. <laughs> So that's the page roles screen. It has um, it has the important feature to to be able to let other people help you manage it, because if you um, if you see we've talked about three different networks so far in this class, and so that's a lot of work, a lot of effort. I have to run the business, and now I've got to tweet, and now I've got to post on Facebook, and now I've got to be active on YouTube, whatever. It's a lot of work. So if you have other people to help you manage it. It can cut down the burden. And the business, the, jo the, the job description, the job of a social media manager, that's a job. 
that's a full-time thing, that companies hire people to, to do this. As I've said, I teach this stuff, but I'm also part of a business that we do this. We get hired to run Facebook for companies, to run Twitter for companies. We have various access levels to be able to do that. Now what I'll say about giving other people access further, uh, give access to, let's say in terms of employees or other people that work in the company, give access to employees that want to do this and can do this. What I mean by that is on the can do this don't give people you know, the keys to the kingdom, don't give them access to the account and then say, okay, you're gonna be in charge once a week, you need to post something. I don't even know how to use my phone, I just got it. <laughs> so don't give people access that don't know how to use Facebook, that how, know how to use the app, that, that don't know how to use their own phone. So do, uh, don't give this to people that also don't want to do this. I gave this to John in payroll, but he's busy doing payroll, and now you've got him also tweeting and being live and all of that. He's busy doing payroll. He doesn't want to do it, so he'll do it halfway, and, and your content will suffer. Because you've got a goal of once a week to, to use the social media, doesn't mean just use it without a real plan or a real desire to use it. So employees that don't know how to use Facebook or social media should not be given access to the company Facebook. A lot of times we get clients that say, you know, uh, we were using Facebook before and uh, we had our cousin working. He's really good with social media. But now they don't want to do it anymore. They can't do it anymore for free. You know, free family labor goes only so far. Eventually they get tired of doing it for free, and not that they do it actively, but then it it suffers. I don't want to do it anymore. I've been doing it enough. I've got my own stuff to do. Um, that's the part about want. Don't burden employees or unofficial family employees. Don't burden employees with another task. Social media is something you need to do on a regular basis. Not once every month or four months. Once a week is good as a beginner. The more you're active on any social media, the more you can reach an audience. But don't burden other people. Don't, don't, per, don't burden the person that is you know, um, working in payroll, in your payroll office, to now also find the time to tweet. Don't burden the person that was hired to write the blogs to then also tweet. They need to know how to do Facebook or Twitter or, fa or all of that, and they need to want to do it. Here's another valuable screen to look at if you go over to Preferred Page Audience. Sometimes I see that people don't have this. And again, this is Facebook A-B testing that some people have access, some people don't. Some of these features also are not active until you actually start using Facebook a bit. Uh, for example, a couple of people tell me, I cannot choose my username. My username button is missing. I can't claim my name. For some people, you have to have uh, like 25 likes to claim your name. This is to prevent spammers from claiming a name. So if you have some of these options and some of you don't have it, I can't do anything about it. You have to uh, use Facebook, uh, be active with it. Preferred page audience. I don't have one set yet. When you select a preferred page audience, anyone can find your page, but we'll do our best to put it in front of the people who matter to you most. Right now I have a Facebook page. Victor's Bakery, or Victor's Bites, Best Bites. And I'm, I'm a bakery. I'm trying to reach an audience to sell cupcakes and birthday cakes and all of that. Well, 
I have the potential 2 billion people on Facebook, but I'm trying to reach people in San Diego. Um, what's the population of San Diego? Like 1.5 million or something? 2 million or something? So millions of people that I could reach in San Diego. The good and the bad about that is if I'm trying to reach so many people, I'm casting too wide of a net and I'm not ca catching the fish. If I cast a smaller net in the right place, I can catch the right fish, the right audience. So if we look at this screen, set preferred page audience, I can target who might be most interested in my Facebook page. I might reach easier the people that really would be more interested in following, in buying the product, in liking the post. Before I set a page audience, I could reach potentially 2 billion, 62 million, 545,237. That's too big. I, I, I'm not going to find the right people being that wide, finding, trying to find people. So look at all these options we can set to try to narrow down our focus. This is very valuable. In the real world, that commercial for a video game is going to play on a TV channel where it would be most likely for a video game player to see it. That video game commercial might not do very well if it's played on you know, a financial channel. The people that are watching the financial channel are interested in finance, and then a video, com video game commercial appears, not interested. So that company posts that video game or public pub broadcast that video game commercial on MTV maybe or you know whatever channel where a video game player would be found in the digital world we have this way to target as well location these companies that TV commercial they run that commercial they can run it they can run one version of the commercial in California and one version of the commercial in Montana again they can target the location in the real world in the digital world Look at the options. People who live in this location, and it tells you people whose home is within this area. Everyone in this location, people whose home or most recent location is within the area. People recently, people whose most recent location is within the area, and people traveling. People whose most recent location is within the selected area, but whose home is more than 125 miles away. So let's say I'm a travel agent people that are visiting, uh, you know, they, they left the, the rainy, uh, you know, Portland uh, location to come to sunny San Diego. So their home is further away and we can target these are the people I'm trying to reach, the people that are out of towners, the people who live here or who are currently in this location. Facebook knows the, all this information because all that we fill in about our high school, our favorite book, what are we doing, what did we eat today, that message to our friends and family, Facebook is storing all of this information. And this is, again, why on the personal level I hate Facebook. But on the business level, I love Facebook because people are putting all of this information freely into Facebook that I can use as a business. In the real world, a business would love to know what you had for breakfast so that you, it can show you a commercial for lunch to tell you what to have for lunch. If you had this thing for breakfast, maybe this thing you will like for lunch. So you will decide which of these works best for your business. But let's say local business, Victor's Bakery, I want people in this location either people that live here or that are visiting, so everyone in this location would be fine, and the particular location is here. I could write San Diego. Let's say, do you mean San Diego, California, Texas, Venezuela? I mean San Diego, California, the best San Diego of all. Click there, and then now this 25-mile radius of people, even people out here on the islands, uh, could be reached. 
Facebook is going to try to have your posts on Facebook reach the right audience to various degrees when you target here. I can narrow or widen that to various degrees. I can put multiple locations. If I put 10 miles, and then I also put um, Los Angeles. Do you mean Los Angeles, California? Los Angeles, Texas? Hey, Texas is copying us again. Los Angeles, Texas. Los Angeles, Chile. So, Los Angeles, California. I'm targeting two locations here. This does not mean that only the people in Los Angeles and San Diego will find my business. Facebook says that at the top here. It's just saying that it will try to have your content most easily visible by people in those locations. People in Los Angeles, Chile, will be able to still see this if they, if they search for it. Questions always come up, well, I ship all over the world, what do I put? Nothing, because it's all over the world. You cannot put here Earth. I guess there's Earth, Texas. <laughs> Earth City, Missouri. Blue Earth, Minnesota. Okay, well, people then say, I ship all over the US, United States. Um, you can do that, you can do a whole country. So now we will be targeting the whole country. Let's say I'm targeting the US and Japan, and do that. So I'm trying to target US and Japan as the likely audience for my product. But this is something you need to think about and decide and figure out what will be most effective for you. Let's say I do ship all over the US, but I have a retail store in San Diego. It's okay to put San Diego here. Again, that will not exclude you from anyone anywhere else. And on another screen that I'll show you, you can, you can, you can refine this whenever you want. This is, in general, an option for my whole account. But in a later screen I'll show you, you can make each individual post targeted to each individual region. We have include, we have exclude. I don't want my page visible by certain areas. Age. This is another one where you should specify. Go into an age range of your potential customers. If you have this pretty broad, 18 and up, you have a product that is really not going to be interesting to, you know, under under 40 year olds, and that's fine. Choose the range that makes sense for you. If I'm a tax preparer, you know, people that are more serious about doing their taxes, having their taxes done, are going to be a little older. Younger people perhaps are going to do it really fast on TurboTax when they have a simple sort of tax. Um, requirement, but someone that has, you know, investments in IRAs and uh, a pension and all of that, you probably want someone that knows how to do this, so my tax business would be served best to those that are 40 and up. Those that are 20 will be able to find you, yes, but here I'm going to focus a little bit more to half a billion people instead of two billion. Only half a billion instead of two billion. That's okay. You can target gender, but on this one I would recommend to keep it open for everyone, unless you do have a product that you definitely need to, to focus. A really good one here is interests. Here you can type keywords to help find people. Let's say, just for fun, I'm doing that tax preparation. Uh, if I look up CPA, taxes, you have all these possible keywords, and as I hover my mouse over it's telling me in general these are your potential audience. Also you can just go into browse 
and try to find through there. Let's see, business is an industry. Banking. General business. Economics. Personal finance. Credit cards, insurance, investment. Uh, maybe I'll do personal finance. So if I add personal finance as one of the interests, it cuts it down to 150 million. It's okay that we're getting the audience smaller and smaller. If we get it down to 1 million, that's fine. That's 1 million potential customers. If we get it down to 250,000, that's fine. I can build my business on 250,000 potential customers. If I get it down to 1,000, these numbers don't quite, none of them is really bad unless it's really, really small, like 200, you know, under 1,000, under 10,000. Are you going to be able to build your audience on such a narrow target? And you could add more, more than one of these interests. Let's say also financial services. It went up a little bit, 153 instead of 150. So for my notes here, I'll say, set your target audience. Who would be most interested in your page? Yes? How many pages do you like checking? Because I would recommend um, up to five five at the most, but I would really recommend up to three. Okay. More than that, the audience is too narrow. Less than that, it's too wide. So somewhere I'd say three to five. Three is good. Yes? What does this do for you by narrowing it down? Does it give you a higher ranking on where Facebook will not necessarily higher ranking, but Facebook is going to try to show your page to people that are most interested in you, who you've narrowed it down to. You might have used Facebook, and when you log in, it gives you suggestions of pages, or it gives you suggestions about check this out, or click on this. So that's what this is doing. It's going to have you sort of promoted to people within that range that would be most interested in you. So not really in the rankings, that's a different sort of thing, um, but it's still a way for it to reach the right audience. And where does it get this information? About people's interests and all of that. This is what I said about everyone gives this away freely. When you log in and create the account and you put in your high school and you put in your favorite book and your favorite color and all of that, Facebook is storing all of that. When people post a family photo and they post a message, look what I had for breakfast. People, Facebook is storing all of that. I went to, you know, I went to McDonald's today. Facebook stored that. So everything that people are just simply using Facebook for, we have all that access of that info here as a business. Uh, so I'm going to put two as an example, and then we've got language. This one's uh, confusing for people. You would think, okay, I want to target people that speak English, speak Spanish, speak German. Okay, well, before you select a language, the little note here says, leave this blank unless the audience you are targeting uses a language that is not common to the location you've chosen. So if I chose San Diego, Spanish and English are going to be very common. Tagalog are going to be very common. So I would put perhaps Hebrew if I'm trying to reach that audience in San Diego where it might not be common. This is something that you need to know before you make an option change here. It's fine to leave the language perfectly empty. This went down to 713,000. Maybe that's my audience. Great! I could build a business on 713,000 people. Without specifying a language, I can reach that many, 153 million. Let's say I did put San Diego. Three hundred fifty-two thousand, based on people interested in business and industry, finance, this age range, a location of up to twenty-five miles. Let's say I max it out to fifty. Four hundred thirty, so about half a million. 
Now if I want to specify people speaking Hebrew, 552 people. That's way too narrow. But it may work. Depends on your business. Regarding languages, this is the one I would really recommend. Leave this blank. Unless you know you're targeting an audience that, um, that you are trying to find. So Japanese is 1,300. So it's not a language, it's not an English, Spanish, or Japanese. It's got to be all three, because otherwise they wouldn't drop you down to such a small uh, population. When we start to focus, yes. Now you then have to specify the other languages because now it's cutting it down even more. Oh, so you brought it back up. Oh, so if you leave it empty, that's the wider audience. As you start to narrow it down, they say, okay, here's your narrow audience that you asked for. So now I've got to bring it back and put back Spanish to get back to the higher numbers. That's why I would say, let's just leave this empty. This is our preferred page audience. If you like that, you can click Save, and you can change this whenever you want. Let's take one more break. When we come back, we'll talk about um, the Facebook ad system, because the double-edged sword of Facebook, here's the one big secret for Facebook. You should use ads. Let's take a break. I'll explain that in detail and how to use it. But that's Facebook. <laughs>